you want me to say hi? Hey, <laughs> I feel like I'm making like a YouTube video. My name's uh, Jose Silva. I'm a freelance photographer based in Toronto. I consider myself more so like I'm a, like a graphic designer or like motion designer. That's my like my day to day, my nine to five. And the uh, photography thing was kind of like a passion. Uh, it came from my wife getting into it first. I would say about like 12, 15 years ago, she bought her first camera, which was like this crappy little Canon Rebel. And I was always been kind of like interested by photography, but I never took that plunge. Like I never tried it. And so she got into it and then I quickly followed. And over the years, we always just used photography as kind of like a creative outlet. You know, we slowly got into shooting weddings together. After we had kids, we just took advantage of being photographers. And like when they were born, I was in there with a camera. Not close to my wife, but like up close to the kids. So like when they were held under the, the heat lamp, like I have like their first shots of like the first breath that they ever took. And that was like that was really special, really special to me. Over the years, I got into live event photography. I've always been inspired by sports photography and, and you know, concert photography from back in the day. That led me to hook up with like TFC and TSN. I worked a few years with The Score in Toronto and, and that also gave me some opportunities to, to shoot some live events like esports stuff as well. And I've just always had a passion for capturing those instances of, of, of people's reactions, those emotions and, and see how I can translate that through uh, a photo. I think one of the reasons why I gravitated towards photography and kind of more away from like my design stuff that I did day to day is that uh, photography is very instant, so you just have to have that patience to kind of capture the, the image that you want, the story that you want to tell, and, and kind of basically once you shoot, like that's it. While the other type of design work that I do is, you know, there's, there's a lot of process, there's a lot of back and forth, uh, revisions and all that stuff. But yeah, there's something just about that instance um, that really appealed to me. A lot of my uh, influences come from having a, a South American background, you know, it's uh, a lot of the cultures down there are very passionate, especially over the last like decade, there's been a lot of political movements and there's just a lot of history down there. So going to Chile with my wife was also one of the big photography moments for both of us. We were able to capture so much imagery of like the streets and the people. And one of my favorite photos that's just over there, I shot with the rebel. It was a bit of like a lesson in photography. It's definitely the photographer that makes the image because I've gone back since then with better equipment and a better camera. And I've tried to capture the same shot and it just didn't feel the same. It wasn't the same people that were in, in the crowd. The lighting was different. It was just a different vibe. And uh, it was like a really humbling experience. Also greatly influenced by sports, having shot a few games with TFC and TSN. It's really fun to capture the fans' perspective. Most of the stuff that I try to shoot is really referencing and, and hugely influenced by film. Obviously like Roger Deakins and, and Wally Pfister, like all the stuff that he did with Christopher Nolan over the years. You know, the Deakins stuff that he's done with uh, like Denis Villeneuve. And I found that like some of the latest stuff that I've posted on my Instagram has been greatly influenced by that approach. And it is a very selfish thing. Like a lot of the photos that I take are for myself. And then if people like them, that's great. And that's kind of the, the approach I take when I take these images. When my wife, Jessica, got into photography, she came back with some street photographer references. And there's this one photographer that goes by the name of Boogie. He captured like these instances of life downtown, you know, in the projects, different street gangs. You can see his personality as well as the subject's personality coming through the images. And I think that was one of the big moments for me that I got really inspired to start shooting like street photography and getting out out there. I currently work for Shopify as a senior designer and uh, over the years I've had the opportunity to actually incorporate my photography background into my day-to-day. -day. So that's led me to direct some shoots as well as, as uh, actually hands-on shoots and it's kind of opened the door creatively for myself as well to, to not be tied down to just doing the one kind of craft. I think it's interesting too how photography has kind of changed the way that I look at the world. Especially once you start traveling, you kind of start seeing the world with a different eye. It can definitely be annoying. There's been instances where I've purposely told myself not to bring a camera with me and to kind of just enjoy it. When the, the Raptors won the championship, uh, we happened to be downtown 
Toronto at the exhibition. We were setting up for uh, a live event. We were right in front of like all the Raptors and we shot like Lowry with like the trophy. I got Kawhi smoking his cigar, uh, Masai like high-fiving like all the, the fans and that was just all purely selfish. Like I'd love to at some point have these all printed and have them up in, in my house because that's definitely like an iconic moment in Toronto and even Canadian sports. This one time, I think TFC had made the finals for the first time and it was being held at BMO Field. We had a Christmas party that night and I, I told my wife, I'm like, we have to go down there. I'm like, I don't care if we're like an hour late to this party, like we have to be down there. So we drove straight down to Liberty Village, 100% unprepared. There was like cops, there was like a blockade. That's when like all the supporters basically took over the streets and they were marching toward the stadium. Because the streets were all congested and in disarray, I just parked the car. I told my wife, I'm like, I'll be back in like 10 minutes. And she's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I just like left. I grabbed my camera, I ran down. I was actually able to take like some of my favorite photos I've ever taken. And uh, you know, they had the supporters, they had like flares and all the drums and they were being police escorted. But it was such a thrill, it was such a rush. I, I shared those photos with, with TFC and I, I printed a couple of them on, on some t-shirts and it was totally worth it. But I just remember going back to the car and my wife was just terrified. She's like, there's cops everywhere. She's like, I didn't know what to do. She was sweating. And it's funny, like being on this side, like I'm extremely nervous, but if you tell me to, to go and take photos of like a riot, I'll be there. I'll be right in the middle. I'll shoot whatever I can. I want to be there with the people. I kind of want to experience what they experience and then kind of tell their story through the photo. A friend of mine, Ben Cordes, did some work with Town Brewery. And when I saw that he was collaborating with them, I reached out to him and kind of asked him, like, how did he get that contact? I, I love beer. I love beer culture and, and, and craft brewery culture. And I've always wanted to work with a beer company. I had kind of known about town before and you know I always like those breweries that like to work with local artists. You know the labels are always changing and really dynamic. I just contacted Travis directly and I was like I want to work with you guys. I want to I want to get my photography on a label as well as shoot you know whatever you need. Travis hit me up and he's like hey he's like there's this one photo we want to use for a label. As a photographer and definitely as a creative it was like one of the happiest moments I've ever had where it's, it's very rare that you can reach out to a client that you want to work with and then they're just down to collaborate. It just makes it all worthwhile you know like all these years of Taking photographs as a hobby and then turning it into like a, a profession, it pays off when you're able to, to work with these, these really great brands. And my kids thought like I was a little bit of like a celebrity, which was really weird. Like their minds were blown that my artwork was on a, a beer label. I love like the embedded skate culture that it has, the willingness to work with like all these other creatives. And it kind of helps spark your own creativity where it's like not only did they choose some of the artwork that I've done, but now going forward, like even when I just went to LA, like there were some shots that I was like, oh, this would be kind of cool like to be on a label. You know, the, the first opportunity I had with town was to use my photography. It'd be great like moving forward if I can kind of bring like my design or illustration and maybe get some stuff on a t-shirt or a hat or a sweater. Yeah, just keep working with a great brand. I think I need to start printing more stuff. I definitely want to get more of my, my, my photography out there. If I was saying before how it's very selfish, I have printed some photos on t-shirts just for myself. And then I've been pressured by my wife to be like, why don't you sell that? Like, why don't you share it with your friends? I'd be like, nah, it's fine. I think I, get, I just get too embarrassed to kind of promote my work, but I probably should put it out there. I think that was probably be the next step for me. It's like, how can I start sharing more of my photography uh, with other people and not just have it on my you know, Instagram feed? If you want to look for any of my work, my latest stuff, uh, just search for Kid Condor on Instagram. So having a, a Chilean background, the condor is like the national bird of Chile. And growing up, there was a little cartoon uh, called Condorito. The condor has always been a really important symbol in Chilean culture and a lot of countries in South America. We know when Instagram was, was, was blowing up and becoming a thing, I just kind of wanted like a moniker, like some kind of nickname. Basically came up with Kid Condor as kind of like a shout out to like that childlike creativity, uh, also like a shout out to like hip hop culture and anything that has to do with, with you know, street photography and my roots growing up. 
they kind of just stayed with me. So there's the Kid Condor on Instagram. I have like the kidcondor.com as well. And that's probably something that I hope to maybe one day turn into some kind of brand that would infuse all of my passions of, you know, photography and sports and, and live action and art and illustration.